Assalamu alaikum, friends of Book Bites. And this, this Sunday evening, we have an inc incredibly special collection called The Texture of Descent um, and how defined public intellectuals in South Africa are uh, contextualized within this collection. We often talk about, um, you know, how debate and conjecture shapes public discourse. Um, the importance of this collection cannot be underestimated when we consider the range of intellectuals who have been featured in here um, by uh, a group of editors who've worked really hard to bring this together and a group of contributors working under them. Uh, this evening, I have Professor Nanya Bowler Miller, who is an executive director of the Developmental Capable and Ethical State Research Program at the Human Sciences Research Council, a young professor of the Nelson Mandela School of Law at the University of Fort Hay, and a research fellow of the Center for Gender and Africa Studies, University of the Free State. Um, welcome to the show, Nanya. It's absolutely brilliant after having had the time to read through the texture of dissent to have an opportunity to chat with you this evening. Welcome to the show. Sharing some. I'm hoping we haven't episodes. lost the guest. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Welcome to the show. Welcome okay. to Book Bites. Hi, hi. Um, sorry about that. I, I must have disappeared. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very honored to be here tonight, and I'm looking forward to our discussion. Fantastic. I mean, you know, to jump right in, the texture of dissent is a, um, it's firstly a meaty volume of a very important collection of, I think, just over 70 public individuals, public intellectuals, exactly that. Um, talk to us about the process um, and, and, and the motivation around collecting this level of um, biography and, you know, the reasoning behind that. Tell us about your process. Um, thanks so much. So uh, one of my colleagues uh, who used to work with me at the Human Sciences Research Council, um, Professor Vasu Reddy, um, contacted me. So this is a collaboration between the University of Pretoria Faculty of Humanities and the Human Sciences Research Council. He contacted me to say he's got a grant um, from the Mellon Foundation. And one of the things that he wants to do is to look at public intellectuals and the influence of public intellectuals on the South African landscape. And it would have to be a diversity of uh, public intellectuals. So I roped in um, one of my colleagues, Dr. Greg Houston, and, uh, Dr. and Professor Reddy roped in two of his colleagues as well. Uh, so there are five um, editors of this book, and that kind of makes it special because, as I said, it's a, it's a diversity of intellectuals, and therefore there were five people who were really brainstorming and thinking about how this could work. And it's certainly not perfect. And we say that in the introduction to the book because different people perceive intellectuals differently. Um, but the discussion we had really was around, more around people who have made a difference in some way uh, to the South African discourse, to the way in which we think and debate and live um, in South Africa. So uh, we, we had um, a discussion and then we released the first book. So I'm just telling the process now. So the very first book was called The Fabric of Descent. Um, and so we can call this the first volume, if you wish. Now, in this book is also about just over 70 public intellectuals. So in total, we couldn't leave any out. We decided to go for a second volume which is called The Texture of Descent. Um, we had to think a lot about the kinds of, of uh, messages that we wanted to bring across in the books. And so we decided to divide the book into four. Um, and so the first uh, part of the book is about um, political intellectuals. South Africans love politics. The second uh, part is academic intellectuals. The third part, cultural intellectuals. And the fourth part, is organic intellectuals. I looked at, you know, how these have been configured, the different parts. I mean, you've got 20 each of the political and cultural. Um, fantastic uh, names. 
we've got so many living legends and and historical um, biography that you've captured here. And then obviously about nine academic and 24 organic, you call, you call them organic public intellectuals. So from different uh, and vast sort of um, experience, they bring in a vast experience to this, this idea of what constitutes public intellectualism or, or the public intellectual. Um, speak to us about how this was configured. I mean, as five editors, what would have you what would have constituted your your range of debate around who to who to include in here? Because I mean, within your list of editors are you know people who are including yourself who constitute uh, a range of public intellectuals and so many more that we experience around ourselves, and yet you you have a meaty, very conclusive, very a uh, huge contribution to this to this collection. Speak to us about bringing that together and choosing who who goes into these these spaces and these under these headlines. This is really the most. It was the most difficult thing to do, um, and it wasn't just us brainstorming. We were talking to people everywhere. Um, public intellectuals who are featured in the books, uh, those that aren't even featured in the books. Um, to try and find what we wanted a mix. We wanted to show how diverse South African thinking is and how diverse South African society is. So the first volume was more historical. So the um, all the public intellectuals, uh, many of whom have passed away, um, but have made a tremendous impact on society. And this new book, um, that we are talking about now is more about contemporary. Uh, there are many contemporary public intellectuals in this book. And nobody really writes a lot about contemporary public intellectuals. And what was just a, a, a small anecdote was what was quite sad was that uh, Frini Janwala died while our book went to press. Uh, so, you know, we, we could have done a, a tribute to her instead of merely... Um, she's the first person, ironically, um, in the book that we write about. Um, but it was very um, sad that, uh, you know, we hadn't been able to do something maybe a, a little bit more for her because uh, she was such a phenomenal woman. So both right. books start with women, but one of the main criticisms actually is that we don't have enough women um, public intellectuals in the books. That's an interesting debate that we could take on. I just it's so exciting to to open a collection like this and see uh, you know the sort of the weight of content that you have and and the significance of it because I mean if I may say as South Africans what's more what's exciting about content of this nature is also the realization and appreciation of um the real work that gets done behind the scenes when we're so fatigued by corruption you open every journal and newspaper these days or any link online and you're, you're hearing about corruption and our, our state structures are, are burdened and our, and our infrastructure is overburdened by, by, you know, what's happened with corruption. So the significance of, you know, of this collection, I think, cannot be underestimated. Obviously, you, you and your team know that better than anyone. Let's talk about some of the names um, that have been, you know, listed and configured here. You mentioned Frenny Jinwala. You've got Ronnie mm -hmm. Kestrel, Stabo Mbeki, Chris Hani. This is just the political. Um, Khalima Matlante, Alan Busak, Frank Chikane, Travel Manual, Bladen Zamande, Bani Desai. Fabulous. You know, mm -hmm. um, Patricia Delil, Steve Biko, Bani Petiana, and, and the list goes on. Um, speak to us about, you know, some of your, I'm putting you on the spot here, but some of your favorite pieces from here? <laughs> um, well, some of my favorite pieces were the ones I chose <laughs> to write about. Um, so I, I I love cultural intellectuals. Um, so of course, the political intellectuals, they're easy to write about um, because they are really front and center. South Africans of politics are crazy sometimes. But we want to tell, um, you know, good stories as well about South Africa. So I enjoyed writing about the female um, public intellectuals, the women, um, in particular, Koresa Karim, um, who is a, a phenomenal scientist uh, and her husband, 
uh, was obviously very much in the media during uh, COVID, but she's in her own right, a really brilliant scientist. And since I've written the chapter on her, I've actually met her. Um, and I, I think that um, not only my own, but, but I think the, the intellectuals who people don't normally think about as intellectuals, um, you know, so uh, it's easy to say, you know, we, we know about Tabu Mbeki as a, a public intellectual, um, but we very seldom think about um, Brenda Farsi as a public intellectual and, and what she contributed um, to, to the way in which things changed in South Africa. So in a sense, this is supposed to be a good news story. It's about South Africans who've made a difference, um, South Africans who've res resisted oppression, but in a way it's sad as well. Um, as you've said, despite all these brilliant minds, um, and despite their contributions, we still sit in a terrible situation. So we seem to be, as South Africans, very good thinkers, but not necessarily very good doers. Um, and so we need to, you know, move beyond the, the, the role of the intellectual to the role of the implementer, to the role of the actor. And many of these intellectuals did uh, become actors and were actors but their main contributions were really around thought and the way in our thought patterns and the way in which we are enslaved by our minds, as, as Steve, Steve Biko would say. So it, it was exciting writing about people who put it all on the line, some of them, um, in order to bring their ideas to the fore. Um, and, and including um, some Africana intellectuals during the time of apartheid who, um, you know, really, really made a contribution towards freeing the country. So it's a, it's a collection of all sorts, uh, diverse people from diverse backgrounds, uh, different religions, different races. Um, so that's, I think that's what makes it vibrant. And I wish that we could get to that point in South Africa again, where we can see the beauty in our diversity and our diverse ways of thinking. And I mean, when I looked at some of these pieces and you speak about, you know, um, the contributions of uh, through literature, music and, and others is this addition to the public transcript and this change of consciousness, allowing change of consciousness happens beyond just the politics of our time or the politics, uh, the political public intellectual discourse. Um, examples like, you know, I really enjoyed um, uh, reading Johnny Clegg, Brenda Farsi, um, uh, Chester Missing. I mean, you know, yeah. using, uh, like you said, I mean, fantastic ability to just say it like it is and not worry about what happens. His, his use of satire is absolutely brilliant. Um, so puppet politics, I mean, just amazing that, that that's been added in. Um, Wally Sorote, Omar Bacha with his photography. You've got Mike Van Gran, Abdullah Ibrahim, Sibongile Kamalo. And then bringing on to the academic um, public intellectuals, you've got Shireen Hassam, Jonathan Jansen, William Gomede, Ashwin Desai, Patrick Bond, Kuresha Abdul Karimi, as you said, Pierre DeVos. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it's like being at a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being a buffet and having all these public intellectuals set out here. Um, and then you and then what you call organic public intellectuals. Um, speak to us about some of that. I mean, Thuli Madonsela, Mukhring Mukhring, Navi Pele, who just passed away recently as well. Again, speaking to the significance of documenting these stories, Eusebius Makaiza. We've yes. lost the heavy heavyweights. You know, with, since we wrote the book, we've lost people. Um, and it's it's a strange thing to for that to happen. It's a it's a strange feeling because you put a lot into these stories um, of yourself as well, you know, your own because I mean we have to admit it's our own interpretation um, yeah. of the importance of the work of these individuals and and to have lost such beautiful, minds um during this time it, it's painful oddly 
I mean, some of the public intellectuals I wrote about and were written about, I know them. And um, Johnny Clegg, uh, you mentioned him. So it's kind of a personal journey as well. Um, it's not it's not just something that you can remain distance from because these are not only intellectuals, they're people. Um, and they're people who really put themselves out there to make a difference. And organ organic intellectuals are particularly interesting because they're not traditional um, intellectuals. They don't come from an intellectual class um, of people. They come from backgrounds that are different, um, you know, that weren't born into the, to the wealthy classes or the upper classes, but people who fought their way um, into the, the, the public um, imaginary because of the way in which they expressed themselves, they were able to express themselves. And that's why I think freedom of expression is so immensely important and very valuable in the South African landscape. And we don't ever want to lose that, um, that mm -hmm. freedom to, to express and to be um, in the ways that our constitution has has allowed. I mean, you talk about how each of these public intellectuals, I mean, the importance of documenting these stories just shows and highlights how their histories have shaped who they were, often within limited resources, and how they came about to make these contributions, perhaps not even knowingly at the outset, but how they came to shape discourse and how they came to make these contributions. Speak to us a little more about that, perhaps using some of the examples, if you will. Yeah, it's kind of like context, you know. So um, you have, well, let me use um, Edwin Cameron as an example. Um, Edwin grew up in an orphanage. Um, so he was a constitutional court judge, you know. Um, but he grew up in an orphanage. Um, his father had actually been in prison for murder. Um, he had a very, very difficult childhood. And so I think he felt that he needed to make the lives of others better than the life that he had lived. You know, um, I mean, it's really remarkable. That story of coming from where he was, poverty, mm -hmm. um, and, and not having um, a family who loved him and still being able to make such a massive, massive difference. Um, sorry, my, I just need to see my glasses. Um, so, um, the the stories of of uh, pa uh, Patricia Delol also interesting, a political um, intellectual who's managed to span um, politics uh, in an interesting way because she's from the Good Party, but she's you know um, a minister in the ANC, um, and she's one of the few people who's managed to bridge those gaps. And she comes from a very radical background as well. So, I mean, that's that's really amazing. Um, Anki Kroch, a beautiful poetess uh, who fought against sexism all her life and also fought against racism um, and, and really made a difference um, in terms of using her poetry as a form of dissent. Really phenomenal. Um, Abdullah Ibrahim, you know, how music... Mm changes lives um, and how he became a force to reckon with um, through his his art um, and through his being. Um, Shireen Hassim, the perfect feminist, um, she really is phenomenal and I know she's living in Canada now but her heart is in South Africa um, and she really has made a difference uh, to, to women in this country. Um, and and so it goes. I mean, there's so many. I'm looking through this. There's so many beautiful people um, in this in this book, um, and and people who've made such a tremendous tremendous difference. But you know what was what's interesting is that some people would say, "Why this person and not that one?" And that's always an interesting question. Um, and that's why we had to do two volumes. Because, um, you know, the, the obvious people were in the first volume. Nelson Mandela, um, you know, uh, was obviously up at the forefront. Uh, Charlotte Peke. Um, But, you know, people would say, why this person and that one? Well, we've got 150 people that 
we thought we could write about. We have another 150 people that we think we can write about. Um, it's just a matter of having to choose so that you can put something out there, something for people that would be meaningful, um, that would make them feel that they belong because of the diversity in the book. Um, you can see that all kinds of South Africans have shaped our landscape, our political landscape, our cultural landscape, our thinking landscape. Um, and I, I think that's to me the most important part is that it's it's so absolutely diverse from from scientists you know who made a tremendous difference all the way to rap singers um, who changed the published con public consciousness and uh, uh, you know true missing is uh, a very good um, example of that because he's a puppet right but he isn't um, there's a, a certain kind of, of uh, consciousness there. And uh, you get a lot in humor. So we have quite a few um, cartoonists and comedians that we've also included in the books. Chester Missing is less of a puppet than most pe most individuals that we're, we're familiar with or unfamiliar sorry with. About, sorry, sorry about getting his name wrong. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Yes, I was actually interviewed by him um, when I went for the public protector interviews in long, long time ago. Um, and it was so much fun um, seeing him interview others and being interviewed by him and the seriousness of actually the seriousness of what he was doing, but the way in which he was doing it was just, you know, phenomenal. Um, I, I absolutely loved it. It was really great. I think it's incredible, um, you know, what's been accomplished um, through through Chester, and and I'm really glad that he's been, you know, he's been documented here as well. Puppet politics, you call it. Um, yes. I also want to speak to, I mean, you know, the the importance for, as we say, the next generation who have become increasingly, uh, although you've got different ages featured here, who become increasingly sort of despondent with what they see around, you know, with South Africa, with how South Africa's worked or doesn't work for that matter and the importance of a documentation like this just reminds us all that you know the real work still continues to be done whether it's behind the scenes or or not and in so many different spheres and so i think you know you know absolute congratulations to you and your team on accomplishing this especially in two volumes and and hopefully as you say we can look forward to more of them well, I mean, there's so, there's so much to write about South Africa and South Africans, and I do hope that this shows the younger generations that they have an opportunity to make a difference. Um, you know, there's there's a lot there's a lot of scope to change South Africa for the better. Yeah, so I hope that message comes across as well. And I hope this would be a balm for the, those experts who are now, you know, leaving the shores and, and living in other countries to say, well, um, the real work is still being done. There's still a lot to be done. Um, but we've, we've, I think we've got what it takes. We've definitely got what it takes in terms of, of the, will, the willingness to do um, the talent and, um, and the history. Yes, absolutely. The history and the future. Um, we we need to we need to continue to hope, and we need more public intellectuals um, to come to the fore, and we need more people to dissent, and we need to challenge the status quo to make life better. Um, and we can't just allow our youth to step back. We need them, um, and we need their voices very much. So, so I'm going to add to your call and say we need more emerging voices, as you said. Um, yes. To come forward and to to write and to create and to speak their, you know, uh, their passion for our country to keep building um, for a better future. And it sounds almost cliche when I say it like that, but I think we really do need more of a force of dissent and 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 voice, active voice, uh, and mm -hmm. active citizenry to, to 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 be better. Absolutely. I mean, in the past, we've been in much worse situations than we have now and people were speaking out and speaking up and singing and painting and drawing and writing and we can't lose hope we have to carry on 
and I think our incredible sense of humor has carried us through a global pandemic. So um, yeah. things are opening up. There's, there's definitely invitation for more out there. Yeah, I think yeah, I think humor is a very good way that South Africans um, express themselves, uh, and more of that would help. We have to laugh, otherwise we'd cry. Um, so yeah, I, I think we need more cartoonists and more comedians and. Of course, uh, you know, I mean, we've got brilliant ones. Trevor Noah is someone that's really phenomenal and has come back to our shores, thank goodness. Um, so, yeah, we've got a lot to celebrate, um, but it's not only about looking back, it's about looking forward as well. I actually just ran my, my eye through, um, the, you know, the contents just to see is Trevor in there or not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor's in the first volume. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Okay. Okay. So he's not missing. Now, yeah, no, this is absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic to have this opportunity to pick your brain on this collection. And like I said, I'm really excited to, to hold this nice and heavy copy in my hands. Um, we'll even be offering a free giveaway later on our socials. But thank you so much once again for giving us your time. And we look forward to um, new volumes of, um, of the series. Thank you very much, Afanas. I really appreciate being here with you tonight. Fantastic. We wish you all the best um, with future research and documentation of these important biographies. And so there you, you have it. This evening, we got to speak to Professor Nanya Bola miller about the texture of dissent, um, defined public intellectuals in South Africa. We got to really delve into a wonderful list of public inter intellectuals from various streams, um, looking at how debate and conjecture, um, uh, uh, contributions to the literary arts, to the political space, uh, to music and other spaces, has really shaped public discourse and, discourse and will continue to do so, um, along with an invitation for more of the same, for more voices to be heard. But that's it from this weekend's um, edition of Book Bites. We look forward to more in the rest of the the month and um, note our socials for a potential free giveaway of the texture of dissent. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.